and adventure it is! We're off to Devil's Tower, the very first national monument of the United States. Wyoming's representative Frank W. Mondell convinced President Roosevelt to name Devil's Tower as the first national monument in 1906. We've heard there are tons of wildlife there. Uh, we actually heard to watch out for the wildlife because somebody almost hit a bison. Devil's Tower, with its many fastest size rising a thousand feet above the terrain, has captured the hearts and minds of many explorers, geologists, and Native Americans alike. Here we are in South Dakota now. Wyoming. Here we are in Wyoming now. <laughs> this will be the first time we're traveling in a caravan. And we're the Bob. So I think Google's idea of how fast we can drive down this one lane gravel road is uh, a little exaggerated. <laughs> Just a little bit. I actually could have fallen asleep. Finally, we watch out for some fires and get intercepted by the Sundance Kid. In case you're new to our channel, we're Mike and Amy, and we have been full-time RVing all across the country for over three years. And today is our adventure. Little Miss Kayla in the back seat and me just chilling in the front seat. We're about ready to lift up our jacks and go. Well, I guess chocks too. We gotta move, remove the chocks. Both, all the things. Because it's travel day. This is a little bit longer trip for us today around 230 miles. I mean, that's not horrible. We've definitely done more, but it's more than what we typically like to do on travel day. <laughs> this is what it's like being in the driver's seat while we're hitching up. So I'm guessing it's probably gonna take us about six hours. So I'd like to be getting on the road. Um, we have a stop for fuel at some point. There we go. <laughs> I think that's what he was looking for. Um, we have a stop for fuel at some point and also a stop for groceries. We've got to get groceries today. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since we've had a good grocery run. Mike was really smart. He gave me this idea as I was trying to figure out how to do the grocery thing and um, you know how you can use the grocery pickup. Well, he said to me, are most of the things we're getting perishable or non-perishable? Mm, it's a mix, right? He's like, well, if we have them shop for all the non-perishable stuff, we can pick it up anytime in the next four days. That's it, I said, yes, that's perfect because I don't have to have an hour window. I can pick up all the non-perishable stuff ha or have them shop for all the non-perishable stuff, have it ready for pickup when we get there or in the next three days. And it's close enough to where if it really push comes to shove, we can go to our campground and then go back to it if we need to. But then we can go in and shop for our perishable items and it's only a few items. So it'll take us a lot less time. That way it gets most of the shopping done with Walmart and then just the last few items that we have to get on our own. <laughs> I said I was in there chatting with you guys and realized I probably should get out here and help him a little bit. I mean, Chocks aren't gonna pull up themselves. <laughs> Here I am talking about the chocks, but I haven't pulled them up yet, so I better get to it. I'm falling down on my job. I just enjoy talking to you guys. Back to what we were saying now that we have microphones. Microphones, you, what? You were so saying. The people get better audio? Right. So the people get better audio. Kayla looks bored with this conversation already. Mm -hmm. I ask you, what was on the menu for breakfast? I said it was apple oatmeal muffins. And biting flies, apparently. <laughs> We're on the menu for body flies for the morning. Yeah, apparently. All right, let's do this. If we get separated by some chance, you're going to have to stop and I'm going to have to call them probably. Okay. So tell the viewers, Amy, where are we headed? Is this because you don't remember what it's called? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know um, we're going to Sundance, the city. We are. The place is called Mountain View Campground. They have already contacted us to confirm that we're checking in today and ask about what time we're arriving so they can bake us cookies. <laughs> Five stars. <laughs> Five stars. I thought you'd like that. Well, depending on, you know, how good the cookies are, Turn it may right be four stars. Oh, come week. on. If they're trying, if they're <laughs> trying hard enough to make cookies for us on arrival, have cookies ready for us on arrival. I think that's five stars right there. I think it is. We are out though. We're on the road. Yay. And I have already said it once before, but it's travel day. Travel day. 
See you later, Theodore Roosevelt Park. That's right. Oh, it's been amazing, guys. It has. We've seen all sorts of buffaloes that are actually bison. We were joking, but I think, you know, we should actually do this, um, that we should have made a bingo card because every time we went into the park, we saw a laundry list of in three wild animals. Mile. Oops, what did I do? Um, X. Amy's playing with the GPS I while Mike's try trying to navigate onto the roads. I was trying to fix it for us. Ooh, slow, ooh, slow. I was trying to fix it for us. And then I wasn't watching where we were going. Mm. <laughs> and, and I looked up and I realized it was a sharp turn and we needed to go slow. <laughs> I'm so helpful. To the viewers, one of the things I noticed as we were pulling out is the Medora Campground has those really annoying rocks. And I think if you know, you know, and you have oversized tires um, or off-road tires like we do, uh, they get in the treads. And when you start down the road, they they tink on they do that tink 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 along the the wheel wells. Do you guys like? Does that bother you? Does it make you think that there's something wrong initially? Like you got something rattling? Yeah. yeah. Put it in the comments. Tell us, tell us if you had that experience. It frustrates me when we first go because I'm like, what's that sound? You probably right. guys saw me looking around. At what's my that? Yeah, like, it's what's the what's that? that feeling? What's mm -hmm. that? We're uh, kind of a train today. We have, uh, I think Craig and Victoria call it the bob. The person in the front's the bob. Oh. Well, and yeah, that's, that's an Alaskan term, but yeah. Um, it's so that you can see them bobbing up and down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're a bob today, so you can see the rough parts of the road. Yeah, and the person behind us isn't following very close, and I don't know, I find myself like, where'd they go? Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Because they're also not putting their GPS coordinates in, so <laughs> it makes me worry about... We got all the pressure today. Where gotta make sure we navigate, gotta make sure we... Don't lose them. Yeah. <laughs> it's our first time doing a, a travel train. So there's a little extra pressure put on today. So they don't, they don't have cinder cut, but they have um, apple wood. It's a, a brand called Farmland. Are you okay with this Farmland? Yeah, I'm okay with Farmland. I don't know what it is. Never tried it before, I mean, but I'm okay with that. I don't know what the brand that. is, but it's uh, apple wood bacon. And all right, so I'll add that to cart. But it's horses. Just, oh yeah, horses. My guess is though, I'm gonna find something that's absolutely delicious that we're not gonna be able to get other places. I think so, yeah. <laughs> I so, would hope so. So here's my question for you guys. Do you ever find, is that is that a thing for you? Do you find that you find things you really like, but then you can't find them everywhere? Yeah. Well, I was going to suggest maybe we should try and find a butcher at the place we're going to, but I don't know. Yeah. No, we're never really not going to be able to find that anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was just thinking like with coffee, sometimes we find coffees we really like and then we can't find them other places. But the nice thing about that is typically you can buy it online as long as you have a place you can ship it to. But let us know in the comments, what is one thing I would love to know, like one thing you found that was absolutely the best insert item here, whether it's bacon or coffee or whatever it is and you can only find it in that location, I would love to know. Let me know what it is in the location, please, because I think other viewers would like to know too, especially since we love to travel. So maybe we'll get to go there someday and get to try it. And if we do, we'll give you a shout out when we do the video. This is our destination up here. We're doing good on the fuel today. Still got two thirds. Yep. Sorry, a third. We still got a third of a tank. So this is called a truck stop. Um, I think it's a very loose use of the term, but I definitely think trucks can stop here because it's got no overhangs. And uh, the diesel, I believe, is... Oh, they may have a diesel right here, too. I think it's on the far side. Kayla says she's ready for a pit stop. Are you ready for a pit stop, baby girl? So ready. Hey. I'm ready for the snacks. Hey. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have lunch packed, and we are going to eat lunch that we packed, but we also found some 
other things. <laughs> they had uh, they had some local meat that we wanted to get. We wanted to go by one of the butchers, and we weren't able to, so we ended up getting it here. Um, but they have some applewood bacon and some bratwurst. I were told were the best in this world. Yeah, you had to try them. So yeah, have to try them. We got them. We're gonna try them. Buffalo, South Dakota here. That's right. Here's the baby girl. All right, you get it. You have to choose. Oh, oh she's already tr she's already trying to choose. Mama, they're cookies. I got. I don't have to choose. Just give me both. Okay. If she wants the one the le one on the left. Can you take the this one? Can you take the wrapper off, please? There we go. Thank you. Oh, look at the drool. <laughs> yum 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 yums. Everybody gets snacks. She did. These are the pumpkin pie M&M's. Yeah, you get one of each. Woo! Right, I'm gonna try the white. Whoa, that's spicy. It's definitely pumpkin spicy. Yeah, like they, it's like they unloaded the entire can of pumpkin spice into the... It's into not bad. It's just very unusual. We are here at the center of the... Ge not the geographical center of the nation. That's right. Geographical center of the nation. Yeah, Amy got it. Ge I forgot. The <laughs> geographical center of the nation. And they have a monument. Yay! We made it! They do have a dump station here as well, which is really nice. But it does currently say that it is out of order. But this is where we found parking. At least for today. Only for a few minutes. But it was long enough for us to go get the pictures we wanted. So I left shop the over there. Light. And they've got a statue over here. So it looks like this uh, Walmart pickup station is RV friendly. <laughs> Cute. Good, how are you? What is that? Got wet. Got wet? Yeah. <laughs> you gonna go change? I had a couple comments recently in, about our patio, asking us how the patio did during the rain and during storms, and I wanted to address those. I know we did so in the comments, but we'll just bring it up here since we've had a couple questions about it now. The patio does have a rain tarp, which you can see right here, which has two parts, a door part and a longer part that covers the TV. That works really well for getting keeping just the basic rain out. But when it does get windy, like it did last night, uh, the tarp, because it's only held in by Velcro, which you can see here, it's three strips of Velcro that hold it in. And it does, can get blown around if there's a high wind. And especially when there's a high wind coming directly from the back, which is what happened last night. 
So we put the tarp up and then we closed the patio. And that's one of the very few times we've actually had to close the patio. And it's a good thing we did because it started hailing. And that is definitely a time I would recommend uh, picking your patio up. Now ours is, it's really actually easy to pick up. You've seen a couple time lapses of that, but ours is a little bit more difficult because we have the ramp and then I typically will lock our e-bikes to the patio, but I've learned that that's not such a great idea when you have to raise it during stormy conditions. So we're going to find another place to lock the e-bikes up. That's about it though. It's actually, it's uh, the rain tarp's really effective. It's got a chain in it that holds it down and that keeps most of the rain out and keeps all of this area fairly dry. As long as you remember to put the rain tarp down, which I've forgotten a few times. And when I did, I just mopped up down here. Uh, usually the rain only comes to about here and it'll get sometimes, it'll get up to about here and splash the cabinets. But the cabinets are really well sealed and painted. It's an adventure it is. Where are we headed, Mike? We're off to Devil's Tower, the very first national monument of the United States. I didn't know that. It is. So cool. Taking Kayla with us. We've done a little bit of research and it looks like we're not planning to climb it because that seems like it'd be a bit much for us. Be a bit uh, much. It'd be a bit much. So we are planning to go and we've heard there are tons of wildlife there. Uh, we actually heard to watch out for the wildlife because somebody almost hit a bison. One of the campers in this campground, in fact, almost hit a bison <laughs> last week. So um, we're, we're headed there, not to hit a bison, but definitely to snap some shots for you guys if we can. And we're off. We're off for an adventure. That's right. Let's go. A little frustrating because there are all kinds of restrictions, no pets on the trails. I mean, I get it, some dog owners are irresponsible and that's what causes all the restrictions and stuff. It's just frustrating that she didn't get to enjoy as well. So we're sitting here enjoying it from a distance at the moment. idea of how fast you can drive down this one lane gravel road is uh, a little exaggerated. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yes. Is it okay if we come up? Permission to come aboard. <laughs> Permission granted. Get a video of you scaling the tower. Yay! We made it up to the top-ish, as high as we can go. But it's a beautiful view up here. Checking out the posts and the tweets. Mostly the posts. Hey guys, we're headed into Sundance. We're going to go to the part store and pick up a part for the truck. And then we're going to go on something called a sip and walk. Amy found it. It's only like 10 or $15. They talk about the long history, uh, long sordid history, really, of Sundance, Wyoming. Super exciting. We want to, we're going to go learn about the Sundance Kid, otherwise known as Harry Longbaugh. He isn't actually from Sundance, surprisingly. He's from Pennsylvania. He got put in jail by the sheriff. Not only did he get put in jail by the sheriff, he escaped from the sheriff and had to be recaptured and then escaped again. Hey there. Hey. What is this? It is a fuel pressure sensor. To solve all of our problems. So that's right. Solve all of our problems. Two dollars later. <laughs> Cha -ching! Cha -ching. You folks in town, I came right away. You see, hard cases drift through this town. Desperados. But as I look around, I only see desperate people. <laughs> <laughs> So if you'd all come on over here, I've got beer, I've got wine, lemonade, and sarsaparilla. <coughs> come on over with your cup. Yummy yums. 
Thank you very much. Well, it's nice and cold. Tell you, it cost sixty-six thousand dollars to build. Yeah, that'd buy you about four thousand head of cow right now. <laughs> that kind of brings me to the story that I wanted to share with you about one of our people that we got to be with in our jail. A young guy named Harry Longabon. Now I know him much better now than I did because I spent 18 months with him. So let's all gather around Martha and see what she has to say tonight. My name is Martha Jane Canary and I was born in Princeton, Missouri in 1856. And I've got a younger sister, Lena, and a younger brother, Lige. It was formed in 1895 and it burnt down in 1913 and then they rebuilt it. Got his doors open because he would wait for the flood to come through and it would clean all the stalls up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> do his winter cleaning. <laughs> hey, Harry. Howdy. How's it going tonight? Awesome. How are you? Doing well. Good. My father's name was Josiah. My mother's name was Annie. I was the youngest of five children. I made my way into Montana. I found an outfit to work for called the N Bar N. It was a huge outfit. They, they boasted that they had roughly 67,000 head of cattle. The winter of 1886 was so tough. The N Bar N had estimated that they lost roughly 25,000 head. Wow. So they sent myself and a few of the other hands our walking papers. Well, I best be going. Y'all have a great evening here. Thank you, Thank Harry. you very much. Yes. Thank you. Pictures are available with him. Just watch your purses and wallets. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, just an update on the truck. It has been hard shifting as I've talked about before, which is the reason why in one of the previous videos I'll put up here, I uh, changed the transmission fluid out. But uh, we're gonna do some scans. I got a tip and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, I think I may know what the problem is now, and well, hopefully anyway. <laughs> My scan tool did reveal it was the fuel pressure sensor, so I'm trying to replace it here, but I can't get the wire off. So we had to make just one more trip to Napa to get a special pair of pliers to get the wire off, which I just did. And now I'm getting the fuel sensor replaced. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to try and get it torqued. I said, how good is it? I'm done. What? <laughs> Give me <laughs> Five. That definitely deserves a high five. It does. You got it done? You got it installed? I did. Awesome! Yeah! Yes. <laughs> you rock. I don't know if you heard, but like. I heard you rev it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Not sluggish anymore, you rock. Although you see it fixed and working here. Unfortunately, uh, there may be some more ominous things on the horizon, so stay tuned in the next episode. But hey, it's better than it being the, transmi the transmission. That's right. Uh, who are the transmission folks in? Um, AA Transmission in Billings, Montana. They are awesome. They are awesome. He, he didn't know it was this, but no, but he, he recommended um, he wanted to do a scan on the truck, and I'm like, why didn't I think of that? I have a scan tool, so why not scan the codes? And I found that this was, it wasn't throwing a bad code, but it was showing inappropriate readings for the truck. So when it rains, it pours. Mike, tell the folks at home what you're doing. I am what uh, fun you're having now. Cleaning up water from our washing machine because the lint trap or the uh, catch was full. And we didn't realize it, and uh, we were running the wash, and it was overflowing into the floor. <laughs> Just a little. Just a little. Thankfully, we had these things, which are Swedish wash clothes. They absorb a ton, which is fantastic. They were super helpful. I don't know, do we want to show the people at home? <laughs> the fun of having dogs with a washing machine? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's also lint. I mean, because there's no lint trap. And sand, too, apparently. And rocks. Yeah. Apparently. I don't know how rocks got in there. So do we want to show the folks at home? Sure. I guess we can always cut it out later. Mm-hmm.
Mm-mm. That's lint. And it's lint and dog hair, but lint. Gross. Mm -hmm. Don't judge. So Mike's just finishing cleaning up back there. Yeah. We're going to put this back in. Fun times. It has been a rough day, but this has just made it really nice. So to our neighbors who moved in next to us, I hope you end up with a wonderful travel day tomorrow. And thank you again for the tomatoes. Stay tuned next week where we throw caution to the wind and we climb 9,000 feet to boondock. We also get into some deep trouble where the repairs to the truck fail and we're stuck in a Walmart parking lot. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing and you see what kind of epic failures and adventures we get into next week.